Hey, what's up guys? Sir Amanon here, back with another episode of Rose 1000 Dueling Big Rating. Uh, here we are playing again Luna you know, Light Time Thief up against, I believe, Alter Guys today. So yeah, like I was mentioning in yesterday's deck profile, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, that is my latest update of the build. However, that build won't be featured in this video because this is going to be a part of a series of games that I, you know, had played from, I want to say, three weeks ago, or maybe even more. Um, yeah, I just had a lot of stuff backed up, um, and I obviously got busy as far as other video ideas and being sick didn't help either, but uh, here we are just going to now just play catch-up time. Uh, you can expect to see possibly daily uploads, at least for this week, because I'm currently on spring break, so that's really, really nice. But yeah, we are going to just focus on, you know, <laughs> getting ourselves back on the series to, um, you know, towards just completion because I actually did hit a thousand rating, but here we go. We got to actually get all the way there in terms of the, the video content. So here we are, and we are going to just go ahead and hop right into it without further ado. So yeah, we are going first. I'm pretty sure that means I win the die roll. I don't see any world in which I win the die roll. Don't go first. Uh, so yeah, here we are with a hand that is very, very danger, danger heavy. Um, so we are just going to have to kind of hope it works out. There was a time in which I was testing Call by the Grave uh, because Droll was really, really popular around this time. Uh, since then, it's fallen off in terms of being one of the sort of staple cards, I would say. You know, like Droll is kind of just ubiquitous as far as people assuming it was just necessary to stop Spiral. But uh, as the emergence of other decks into the format, namely things like Should All Invoked and even the, the Rocket deck to a certain extent, uh, a lot of those other decks just don't really lose to Droll as hard. Like, they, they hinder, uh, like, Droll... Or, sorry, Droll hinders um, Rocket to, like, a smaller degree. Um, same with, like, Dino, but I don't think that... I don't think I would ever, like, put those in in either of those matchups. I feel like Droll is specifically for Spiral and, like, maybe this deck. But, yeah, I think that's why Droll has kind of since fallen off in terms of, you know, just being everywhere. So we're going to start off here uh, revealing Mothman because, you know, we we do want to dig, but we also want to get value because, like, if we do it this way, we're guaranteeing that we uh, hit Curious for the most part. So that's uh, that's pretty good. So, yeah, we go ahead and actually hit the Yellow Martin, which is uh, you know, pretty much the best thing we could have asked for. Uh, Martin's going to grab us a search. And you're seeing here that I am still playing the Gamma package in uh, this specific build. Uh, again, I've dropped that since, but... Uh, it was something I was still a firm believer in at the time uh, because I thought that it was just necessary to main deck such a high impact hand trap against Spiral. Um, so you can see that like with Spiral being maybe not like the distinguished tier one threat that people thought it would be, um, with, with that kind of falling to the wayside, I think that uh, it kind of opened the way for the deck to sort of be built in a different way, which I think is uh, why you see the adaptations that uh, players have made. Um, so yeah, that kind of explains the change in that aspect. But we're going to reveal Snake yet next. And then we hit, I believe, Call by the Grave, uh, which is a little bit unlucky. And we draw into Driver, which is even worse. But at least now we're pretty much guaranteed at least Curious. So we can just kind of see where, you know, see where things happen. Uh, I could have maybe made a Lambda here just like in case uh, I wanted to resolve Gamma. But I didn't think it was worth it because like, right now my sights are kind of just set on Curious. And you, you can see what I meant. Uh, when I was talking about it in my deck profile, as far as bottlenecking yourself in a curious, um, like a higher danger count just in, like just ensures that you're gonna have this kind of situation happen more often. Because like no matter what type of build you're playing, the Lunalite ratio is just going to be the same regardless. So like it's not really any point talking about you know whether you'll see the Lunalite cards more. Um, it, it's it's more so like how you get to them in the hands where you don't open them. So like your options are dangers, souls, or like allure of darkness. And I think that the um, dangers are the ones that will, you know, kind of inhibit your ability to sort of, um, what's the word, like, pivot, I guess, in certain aspects because you sort of just are reliant on the curious play if you just don't open enough Luna White pieces. And if you do open the Luna White pieces, the dangers just become a bonus. But, um, you know, we're obviously talking about an isolated circumstance where you don't have the uh, the Luna White already because in those hands you can already play. So... Um, you know, your hands are already good, but we draw into a perfume, which kind of just uh, makes that entire point moot, I suppose. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go into Martin, 
And we're going to overlay for four tricks because if this gets Astra Imperm, then we still have Curious. Uh, but if it doesn't, then we have Zephyr Saxus, which is really good to pair with our Serenade and uh, our Perfume Engrave, obviously. So uh, that resolves, telling me that he doesn't have Imperm uh, or Astra. Like, a lot of people typically try and stop this card, uh, which means that, like, that, that is one of the good things where if you are able to make this prior to Curious, then that's good. But if you have to just straight, like, hard make Curious off three dangers, then that's obviously not ideal. So we're going to carry on here and uh, bring back the uh, the Martin. And at this point, you don't even need the Curious because uh, I have Serenade Dance in here anyway. So that's going to get me the, the rest of the Lunalite plays that I need to. So in this case, I instead just try and play around Appaloosa as best I can. Like, you could have Appaloosa there, which just sucks because I already resolved Martin. And uh, that would have just been, um, you know, just less cards for me. I would have been a plus three for him. But... No. If he had it, he had it, and uh, that kind of hand, like I could have maybe played around it by just going straight up into Appaloosa because I drew Perfume and like just for foregone the, the Zephyrus, but I just feel like you know having the Zephyrus, just when you already have the uh, what I call Trinity of Perfume, Serenade Dance, and Zephyrus just being in circulation, I think it's just, you know, like, like why wouldn't you take that extra value, right? So we have an Appaloosa here for four negates now. And this enables us to just freely go off with our plays. We have Serenade Dance uh, getting us Tiger, or sorry, uh, Chick Axis. Uh, which is really good because we can obviously set up Emerald Bird for the Time Thief stuff. And this specific setup allows us to go into either 3 rank 4s or 2 rank 4s with IP. And I was still, you know, I, I was still testing out with like IP as part of the uh, essential board, which is kind of weird because I didn't end on Gamma in this hand. So, like, that is also kind of strange because. Um, because Appaloosa is one of the things that I like to go into with uh, with Mascarena, but now it's just kind of like going into to Unicorn or Phoenix, which is fine because this driver is going to be in hand anyway. Um, but probably a third bank four would have been good. Uh, if I were to do this play again, I would have just made a like a Dweller or a Nightmare or something, but um, not like super consequential because we will still have the four negations off Appaloosa. We have IP disruption and we have. Uh, we have the Redoer plus Flyback play. Uh, so yeah, I'm also playing Flyback in this deck still. Um, I, I just hate drawing Flyback like now, but uh, back then I just thought it was like really nice to have the extra value. I went for like a lot of uh, higher ceiling cards as opposed to you know maxing out consistency. So like I kind of bricked a lot in a lot of the uh, earlier iterations of the build. But um, I think that the deck just runs a lot more consistently the way that I have it built most recently. So I would recommend my most recent build over something like this, but uh, that's just a kind of hindsight for you guys so he's gonna go on to his sorry to his turn and he has a pretty okay hand um but it's not equipped to deal with this board for sure it would have been like insane going first but um yeah uh, i take a silk which is fine because that means i can at least protect the redoer um from things like main deck evenly matched um so that's like fine uh, I think he was just digging for it, uh, but he draws a third call by the grave. I didn't even notice that, but uh, yeah, it's three call by the grave and uh, Konkiri and Melisleek. So yeah, he just scoops it up without uh, showing me what he's playing, but just Pot of Extravagance telegraphs a lot because it means either it's a back row deck or it's Extravagant Spiral. But Extravagant Spiral hasn't really been too popular recently. Um, it was more popular around the time of the, the when this game was played, but Still, I take the gamble that a lot of people in Dueling Book aren't playing Extravagant Spiral, just from what I've seen watching like high-rated players. Uh, so I just decided it was probably a trap deck. That's why I boarded in Twin Twister here. Um, and he picks up a Meliseek because he doesn't have any other Geists. And you see he cited in Village, and I have four spell cards in my hand. So uh, that's a little bit unlucky. And Meliseek being picked, off the, picked up off the top there, off the duality, is really, really big. Because of the fact that it will make sure that his uh, secret village will be live no matter what because even if I do try and like attack over it um, he'll just get faker and then as, as soon as he can he'll just flip over whatever he can uh, to get uh, faker and silk online so that his village will also be online as well and yeah we draw a snake which is like fine uh, I fired it off and I do believe he actually hits it which is pretty pretty sad for me so I'm gonna have to special it and try and enter battle phase, but like he has Konkiri anyway. So if he didn't have this Konkiri here, like there might have been a window because this Melisleek would have searched the Faker. And then on resolution, like I could have chained to like whatever trap he tries to, to flip up to 
Frog Faker and then use Twin Twister. Uh, so that's like that was like the goal. That was the hope. Uh, but you know, yeah, the Conquiri. So that was the uh, the answer to my answer, so to speak. It happens. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go and just try and fish for more cards with Jackalope because four fifths of our hand is dead, and he is foolish, and we draw uh, another kind of dead card. Um, but he flips up some a little bit. So like, I could have maybe tried to push with like Phoenix or something, but that kind of just spells the end of the game, so I'm not even going to bother to play that out. There is no way that I can play when he has Meliseek, uh, and he is able to just lock me down under probably two of the best Floodgates if they are successful against this deck. So we are going to opt to go first in game three. This one's going to be a bit more back and forth because he has Droll and Lockbird. Um, I kind of risk it here, like I go for a risky, greedy Emerald Bird play. Normally I wouldn't do this, because like, what's the point of cycling through Serenade Dance if it's already going to Graveyard, like you're just drawing a random card, not getting a lot of value out of it, but uh, I decided to do it anyway because I already had everything I needed, so like if he did draw me, then like, it wasn't like in Dire Straits. Um, like, the problem was that like I could have just... You know, not being greedy and search the Zephyrus with four strikes and get drilled there, and that would have been like arguably better. Granted, the fact that I couldn't get the the Serenade Dance out of my hand at that point anyway would have just uh, kind of made the whole point sort of irrelevant. But um, yeah, like in any case, like I guess it didn't matter because like there was no real way to capitalize after getting drilled, like to get maximum value. So just uh, I guess this was like a fine play in retrospect. Just the way that things panned out, and I do end up drawing the Retrograde, which ends up being important anyway, so... Uh, I would say more of, more so that worked out than was like premeditated, but... Uh, I guess sometimes you, you have to take risks, and that was a risk worth taking, considering how... the strength of my hand in general, because I can still make a board here, obviously. So Redoer will trigger Emerald, which brings back Chick, which bring, or sends uh, Yellow Martin. And then I have Tiger, so I can just bring back uh, Martin and then make IP and then bounce the Tiger with Martin and then bring Chick and make a rank 4, which is, I believe in this case, uh, Perpetua, yes. So yeah. Uh, and this is me still, uh, by the way, not playing around Storm, uh, Lightning Storm. Uh, I play on, around Lightning Storm a lot now. And in my later games, but like I was still getting used to Lightning Storm just existing. But uh, that's I guess something to throw in there is that I just did not play around Lightning Storm very much at all in like the earlier stages of my testing process because I just frankly was not used to it. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go standby phase. He contemplates using Imperium on the Redoer here, um, and I can see why he didn't end up firing it off because like he's his play doesn't he doesn't have a play at the moment. Um, so if he imperms and his duality doesn't find anything, or in the case where it's going to happen right now, which it gets negated, um, there is just no solace in that because the imperm would have been straight up a minus one instead of a minus one that actually facilitated something that would have benefited him. So he decides to just let it go. And uh, I chain retrograde to the duality just because like, if they open duality, that kind of just... For, for many cases, it means that their hand isn't going to be very strong, and like even if they have something like Meliseek, then they, they can't like get the immediate plus, so it gives me like an extra extra window to kind of react, but um, yeah, obviously that means no extravagance as well, so like it's like the safest thing to just like shotgun blind negate to ensure that he doesn't like draw any of his blowout cards, um, so yeah. Uh, I, I, he, could, he could draw something like um, evenly matched off of it. Um, and like it just reducing not draw but like uh, reveal something but like just reducing that variance i suppose um is like fine um and, like i had like the redoer to um act as defense against like a mystic mind but yeah him not impairing there just means that like he didn't have anything to uh to pair it with which he didn't there so that was like totally fine uh we draw the foolish off of the redoer effect and then we draw for turn i believe oh we go ip at the end of his main phase too um uh, he doesn't he just goes straight to end phase so uh go ahead and back up to main phase or main phase one rather um i use phoenix to pop the compulse um and i go with that instead of a unicorn just because i can make unicorn afterward obviously on my turn uh so you know just extra climbing extra laddering good stuff uh, so I use Tiger, and he actually chains... Uh, I, I grab an Ash in the standby phase, which doesn't really matter any anyway, but... Um, yeah, he imperms my column, which means that my Tiger is turned off, so I have to kind of 
you know, deviate a little bit and use Yellow Martin to bring that Tiger back. And then go for the Unicorn play here, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, pitch the uh, goods, I think. Yeah, I pitched the goods. Um, and he chain spoofing to grab Faker and Silk. At this point, my board is big enough, and I know everything that he has access to, so I'm just going to go Battle Phase. Um, he's going to have to use Silk, and it's impermed, so it's fine, because um, he targeted the Redoer when he impermed my Tiger Column. Um, and I opted not to chain, because like I just wanted the body there anyways. But yeah, uh, he's going to bounce the Redoer, that's fine. And then there's attacking his Silk, he doesn't have any traps to add back, so... Uh, he doesn't re really have any value because uh, I just now know that he's down to Faker plus whatever top deck. So the goal is just to stop any possible scenario of him um, getting into some way back into the game. So I guess this is where sort of just uh, playing into uh, into Joel somewhat sort of I guess helped because I still had Zephyrus Axis. Uh, only really works because I drew foolish off of the the redoer there. But you know sometimes you know luck luck favors prepared as I like to say. But yeah, Zephyr is going to bounce itself, and I make an Appaloosa here uh, just to stop a top deck like Melaseek or uh, more importantly, Marionetter at this point. Because, um, well, actually, he doesn't have Melaseek in Grave, but still, he'll be able to revive like Silk um, if I don't have a way to stop it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to rescale Tiger and make a Tornado here. I could have made another Redoer just because I, um, I had a Flyback in Graveyard, so I could have just adapted Redoer to do whatever I needed it to, but. Um, I felt that like Tornado would have been strong because like if he sets anything um, like off his top deck, if it's a trap, then I just blow it up and it, it's basically just game over from there. Um, what I didn't account for was something like Pot of Extravagance. Uh, like, that could have been big for him. Uh, but he also didn't draw like, evenly either. So, but yeah, I guess not too lucky for him. But overall, we still was we were able to uh, kind of just manage playing through a, through a Joel. Um, which is why like Droll at in some spots is ineffective against this deck, but in other spots it's just you know devastating if you open like tanky plus goods. Um, but I guess you could play around if you really want to with the goods sending perfume. But um, yeah, like in, in certain instances like it's worth playing around. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something to keep in mind. But I think Droll is sort of uh, reducing popularity just slightly. So. Um, I'm not really indexing as much towards it, and things will totally change once uh, Dual Overload and Master Rule 5 come around. So yeah, that's actually going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like as well as any thoughts or feedback in the comment section down below. Feel free to subscribe for more informative and competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! content. If you want to, you can follow me on Discord, Twitter, or Twitch. All the links in the description, as always. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll catch you in the next video. See you guys!